guys. You'll have to excuse me, I just got out of the shower. Also, you're gonna have to excuse the voice for this vlog. It is just something that happens when winter hits. It's like I live in a permanent state of congestion. <laughs> I, no idea why. I don't feel bad, it's just something that happens. I've had all the teas, all the medicine, it just, it just happens. I just live with it. Coupled with the fact that Mrs. Horse is in middle school, and for those of you out there who live with children, you all know, kids are gross. <laughs> no, not that, like, gross in the strictest definition, it's just, you know, they go to public school and they give, they give each other everything, and then your girl works from home and never goes anywhere because she's a hermit. So, as soon as kiddo comes in, all the little germs are like, fresh meat! Back to the vlog. Um, so this vlog, super excited. I was sent this book on Goodreads by Chris, and when I saw the title, it was like, I, I have to, I have to. The title is just too unique. And plus, I was in the mood to read an anthology, Things to Do When You're Goth in the Country and Other Stories by Chavisa Woods. I contemplated not even doing a vlog for this because this book is so short. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, barely over 200 pages. I had to. I read the first story, which was like dead at 50 pages, and I had to. I was like, I have got to record my reactions to this book because the first story is absolute batshit insanity, and I loved it. So what I think I'm going to do for this vlog, a little bit different than our others, I think I'm going to check in after each story because if the other stories are anything like this first one, this anthology is shaping up to be one hell of a ride. Literally, this first one. When I tell you, you're going to be like, it's about this woman who's visiting her brothers and she smokes a lot and it's right at around the same time that Osama bin Laden was killed by the Navy SEALs. And then all of a sudden there's like some like alien body shit that happens and it's amazing. And it completely comes out of left field. And I've literally finished the story like what the hell did I just read? It was awesome. I loved it. It is literally why I decided to do a vlog for this one, because I feel like my raw reactions are just going to need to be documented. <laughs> anyway, guys, I will see you all after the next story, which is called Zombie. And all I know, based on the little blurb, is that it's about a cemetery. So we'll see. Bye for now. Hey, guys, it's like 730 in the morning. So that's why it's potato land again. <laughs> and my voice still sounds like crap, so you'll have to excuse me. But I just finished the second story, Zombie, in our anthology. I am still not disappointed in this book. Remember in the last check-in how I said all I knew was that it was in a cemetery? That's so not the point of that story. <laughs> okay, and you guys know I don't, I don't give spoilers um, until the review. But this story... <sighs> I almost want to say it was bleak. It had some coming of age elements to it, which I don't mind, but it was very, again, bleak is the only word that comes to mind. And the main characters in the story are the same age as Mrs. Horse. So I feel like one of the kids say it hit different for me because I could so easily picture these two 12 year old girls, like their mannerisms and everything. But it was one of those stories where you get to the end and you were like, you know, did it really have a point and why do I feel bad? <laughs> you know, I feel like you know what I'm talking about. If you read horror, I feel like you know what I'm talking about. Like, there wasn't really any overarching in-your-face message, but at the end you were like, changed somehow. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I've got a little bit of a break between classes. I'm gonna go try and rest my voice. <laughs> and probably read a little bit more, drink a little bit of tea, and then I'm due for another class. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope none of you have this like congestion crap. Comment down below. Do you fight congestion every time winter hits? Do you live somewhere where winter's not a thing and you want to gloat about it? Feel free in the comments. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys later. Hey guys, still at work, <laughs> but I finished our next story. So this next one, Okay, I'm just gonna say we have, <clears throat> again, excuse my voice, we have acid trips, schizophrenia, um, a, a very strange drug-induced sex scene. Yeah, it was a lot, but it was so good.
it was really good. And you know what? It actually touched on something that I myself have thought of before. You know, I studied mental illness, but I have never taken acid. And it has occurred to me that, you know, acid trips or trips in general might kind of be like certain forms of mental illness. And this sort of touched on a little bit of that. It's something that has crossed my mind. Comment down below. Have any of you ever thought of that? Like, I have. I thought, you know, that the way that I read about, like, different trips on various substances, to me, sounds like schizophrenia, you know? Or any number of, like, auditory or visual hallucinations. So, I, I was really intrigued that the story kind of danced with that concept a little bit, so... Again, guys, I apologize for my voice, but thank you for hanging out. Um, we are right at about halfway through this book, so I'm not sure how many stories we have left, but so far we are three for three. I am loving this. It is so cool. But I will see you guys after the next story. Bye for now. Hey, guys. So, checking in. Oh, and by the way, this has now developed into a full-blown sickness, so yay. Uh, it seems like I just got over the other one. Anyway, we're, we're going to be on the men soon. Fingers crossed. Lots of tea. This story. So far, what are we in? Four stories now? I think it was four stories. This one is centered around a girl, circa satanic panic era, growing up in the South, Southern Baptist. So right around my age, I was raised Southern Baptist. I vividly remember... September 11th happening, and that happens in the story. And it's essentially her telling you about her classmates and what happens to them and the tragedy that befalls them. And there's one that it's not even really that tragic because, and, and I mean, and this isn't spoilers, you know, he, he returns from the war, but the story really captures that whole, I guess, the southern young person want to get out of the podunk town and go see the world and then the reality of what happens in something like war and consistently four for four all of these stories when I get to the end I'm like it's almost like the story was not about anything in particular but yet you get to the end like wow just this unsettled bleak feeling you know, and it's so relatable. All of these stories are super relatable. And I, and I don't think you have to be from the South to say that. It's just, they're very normal kind of situations, most of them. But then you get this like whacked out twist, but not enough of a twist to be like, oh wow, that could never happen. No, it's like stuff that could actually legit happen. And in some cases, things that you might've even experienced or thought. This might actually be one of the best anthologies I've ever read. No joke. And that is not the cold medicine talking. <laughs> anyway, guys, I will see you after the next story. Maybe feeling better. I don't know. You know, I was thinking, what if my last sickness never really left and it's just now coming back? That's how cold weather works. Maybe it just like tapped it down a little bit. And now that it's coming back, you know, being super cold, it's just rearing its ugly head again. Who knows? But anyway, I will see you guys at the next check-in. Bye for now. It's like 10 minutes later. <laughs> I'm not joking. The next story was like three pages. <laughs> so it's not even 10 minutes later. And here we are again. I don't know what to say about this story. It was really short, but it was almost stream of consciousness. It really was. The stuff about like, this guy is blood. And how I feel like a red bird ripping the red stripes off of an American flag trying to get away. And I'm pretty sure it was written like from the perspective of this person that's sitting in jail. I, it, it was just, it was just batshit insanity. And I really, honest to God, the, the only way I can think to describe it to you is stream of consciousness. Like it was just lots of, it was like the grass is fire. Well done. Well done. If you like stuff like that, you're going to love it. And it was a good length, but after the last few stories, it was kind of jarring. Like, what the hell is this? You know? And maybe that was the intention. Again, I, I know I've said it over and over. Thank you for sticking with Sick Potato this long. I, I have no idea where I keep picking this stuff up. This is the problem with being a hermit, people. You go out into the world, and your body's like, what is this? And you just get attacked by all the churn. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. 
Anyone else have like weird things that makes them feel better when they don't feel good? For me, it's fuzzy socks. These are new. I got these for Christmas. Anyway, riveting content for all of you guys. Fuzzy socks. Hey guys, I'm going to try and keep this brief. Uh, if you can't tell, I really do not feel good. Um, before you ask, no, it is not that. I have been tested and that did come back negative. I think it's just some upper respiratory kind of thing. Uh, but I really do feel like crap. Uh, but I did just finish another story in our book because I'm getting a lot of reading done. <laughs> and uh, this one, again, it was just like balls to the wall nuts. Um, it involved a, a trans man with a mohawk and, and you know, I'm not going to give spoilers, but he had a certain occurrence happen on his head. Trust me, you'll never guess it, but it'll be in the review. Oh my gosh, just completely whacked out like... And the funny thing is, is like when these things happen in these stories, all the other characters just act like it's like some kind of normal. And it's so not. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not one. I mean, if you ask me straight out, I hate politics. This had politics in it, but in such a weird and whacked out way that it was kind of all right. You know, guys, I, I was going to share a story with you all about self-care, kind of. I'm the type of person that I'm going to push through and push through and push through. And that's probably why I get this way because I do work seven days a week <laughs> because I'm trying to pay off my student loan. And when I get hyper-focused, like it's all I can see to the detriment of things like my health. And that's not a good way to be. Don't do that. But whenever I get like sinus stuff, I'm reminded of this story. So I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but in grad school, I worked in an ER. I was a cardiac technician, and one night we had this woman come in, 30s-ish, had like a nine-year-old daughter, I think, and was absolutely screaming in pain with a headache. Come to find out, she had uh, meningitis. And <laughs> the crazy part is, is that it started as like a head cold, and by some fluke, and I mean, and I'm not a medical professional, I don't know. This is just what I was told by my coworkers. By some fluke, she had like a hairline crack in her skull or something, and the bacteria from the infection, like her sinus infection, got through and gave her essentially meningitis because it got into the lining of her brain, and it killed her, like in like two days. And every time I think of like having a sinus infection and just pushing through and not doing anything about it, I can still see that woman's face. I don't know. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. So just remember, nothing's worth your health. All right. It's a hard lesson and it's one I'm still learning, but I want to share that with you all. Nothing is worth your health. Nothing. No bills. No nothing. You only got one of you. You got to take care of it. And speaking of, I'm going to go back to my tea. I'll see you guys later. Hey guys. So it occurred to me that I mentioned Mullen tea earlier and that some of you might not know what that is. It is a weed that grows fairly commonly. Um, I sell it all the time in West Virginia. I haven't seen it much here, but it likes to grow on hillsides. And it's really, really soft. Like if you feel one of the leaves, it's almost velvety, but it's really good for lungs. And I just pick it and dry it. And then I put it in my percolator and make tea. And then I just put a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of plant milk and shake it up and yeah. So, but if you want to research it, I'll try to remember to put the name here. Uh, it's just, it's really good for like lung health. So whenever I get congested or something, you know, some kind of illness that involves the chest or breathing or something like that, I always try to have mullen in some capacity. So so I hope that helps somebody out there. Maybe you've never heard of it. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, so just checking in. You'll have to excuse me. I actually just got done doing some steaming. Uh, I like to put some like peppermint oil in some hot water and steam when my nasal passages get congested. I just find that it helps. Uh, <laughs> so you'll have to excuse me if I'm a little bit red, but I wanted to check in. I just finished the second to last story in our anthology. And again, I have to say I was not disappointed. This one was about a Southern Baptist lady and some 
goings on in her church <laughs> that were kind of interesting. And I have to say, I feel like some of these stories are like you're lifting the window just to peek into their life at this particular moment, and then it's just done. It's over. And that is so jarring. Like, it was kind of jarring with this story. But it, the story was called Revelation, and it couldn't have been more on the nose for a title. I'm really looking forward to talking about this. I really am. As soon as whatever this is decides to go away. Anyway, we got one story left, guys, so hopefully I'll get it done today. I don't have a whole lot planned, obviously. Um, I actually did call off of work for tomorrow and Saturday, simply because I just don't think I can do it. Uh, and it's not fair to my students. It's really not. So I guess we'll see. Uh, should be done soon, and I will let you guys know as soon as I finish. Bye for now. All right, guys, we finished it. <laughs> The last story was the title of the book, Things to Do When You're Goth in the Country. It was very poetic, but it still kept with the bleak sadness of the book, I have to say. I have really enjoyed this. I did. Uh, it was a great read, especially now, where I had a lot of time on my hands. It made me think, and it was an escape. And I mean, I think we all read, at least a little bit for that, right? But it did, it made me think. And it was a good mix of, I guess, religion, even a sprinkling of politics, which I can tell you I don't like. But it was, it was just enough that it was more of a character trait than a reason for the book to be preachy. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, I have to say I really liked it. It was wonderfully put together. Um, it was jarring in so many ways that I hope I can get through in the review, <laughs> but I highly recommend. This has to be one of my most favorite anthologies I have ever read, truthfully. It really does, and it's just like a breath over 200 pages, so it's very easy to get through. But I'm gonna sit here and enjoy the sunrise. Uh, the window in our dining room faces the sunrise, so it's it's nice in the mornings. Uh, but guys, thank you for sticking with me. I know I can't have been easy to listen to this whole time or look at, uh, <laughs> but thanks so much for sticking with me, guys. Please like and subscribe. It would really help me out, and I promise I don't always sound and look like this. <laughs> but I'm real with you guys. This is this is vlogging. This is this is life, right? But I will see you guys in another video. Bye for now.